Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I am JT. Hey guys, I'm Joey. And today we're talking about best competition performances. Epic. Oh, story time. And, uh, you know, I, I think... You this, must have had one in mind, come, thinking I, of coming up with this I, topic. <laughs> I didn't even Surely. Uh, full, full disclosure, Joey came up with this topic. Oh, but this is my one. This is yours. Okay. This is yours, but, it, you know, we... It's all good. We plan out our podcasts every week and they're in a certain order. And we, we talked about this a long time ago. And it, it's not so much bragging. It's just like sometimes you have terrible. Sometimes you go to comp and it's the worst. And, and, and it's, it's sometimes you have shining moments and it worked. And it's untouchably good. It's hard to explain. It sticks with you because you're like, this is the best feeling ever. And, it, and, and if, you've, if you've ever experienced that, guys, maybe you haven't. Maybe you've never competed, but you, it's worth it. For all the, all the bad experiences, it's so worth it because when you have that, that victory or you win that comp or whatever it is, you overcome a nemesis, it's, it makes you a lifetime. Tell it to the grandkids. It's a great thing. Totally. Now, um, Joe, <laughs> the, Joe, the natural Worthington, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Success himself, maybe you can kick us off. Oh, okay. Well, so I was thinking about this one um, since you, you know, told me it's what we're talking on today. And, uh, I, you know, there's a couple, but there's one that stands out in my mind as being particularly special. Okay. Very nice. Um, it was a couple of things converged or, you know, happened on this day. It was, uh, it was the day I met and became, f- well, not became friends with, but met Joel Costello. Oh, wow. So a good friend of ours, Joel, he's a black belt. He's a coach here in, in Sydney. He runs Gracie Balmain. Total legend. Yeah, he, he trains bulletproof with us down here in the gym a couple of times a week, obviously when we're not locked down. Um, awesome guy. And we, we met at this competition. Beautiful. So it was the first time our paths would cross. Uh, it, was a, it was at my period of like the height, I would say the height of my jiu-jitsu froth. Okay. I was a blue belt. I was just training all the time. Perfect. I didn't have, you know, I was working kind of, um, I was freelancing in the film industry. So I had little bits of work, but then long periods of time off. Yep. And uh, things were buzzing at the academy. I remember I had a good friend of mine, Marco, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Marcus, Marcus Schmidt, a German guy oh. who owns uh, Checkmate Berlin. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were on, they actually had the whole of Checkmate Berlin on, on the Bulletproof program. Yes. They had an academy subscription during their lockdown. Shout out to those guys. Yeah, he's a fucking awesome guy. So anyway, so we were, Mar- Marcus and I were both blue belts and we were just kicking the shit out of each other all the time. <laughs> War. Yeah, and he was always technically better than me, but I was like a little bit stronger. So it was like, you know, whatever. Give it to him. Yeah. Um, so in any case, we had, uh, I remember it was like a period of competitions and this was just one of the comps. So I'd been competing quite a bit. Yep. And I had a new girlfriend at the time, a uh, Brazilian girl that I was Ooh, dating. There you go. Marty. And uh, this was, I think this was the first comp she was coming to see. Oh, so no, you know, no pressure. No, right? It's always a thing, you know? It's like, yeah. especially when you're taking your Brazilian girlfriend to watch you do a Brazilian Brazil sport. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, right? Like, you're like, holy shit, like, uh, so much pressure right you can't now. can't fail. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, it was, the comp was at Homebush, which is at Sydney Olympic Park. Yes, indeed. And it was the Hoyler Gracie Cup. Oh, so it was like a Hoyler Gracie kind of sanction, you know, kind of event. He was there, and um, I lived in the eastern suburbs. I was living in Bondi at the time. I, I was running late for this comp. I woke up. I can't remember what happened, but I was running late. <laughs> there you go. And I got in my car, and I'm driving out of Bondi, and it's about a forty-five minute drive. Yes, yeah. And Marcus calls me and goes, "Hey, hey, brother," with his German accent. Where, where are you? Where are you? And I'm like, "Bro, I just left my house." And he said, bro, they just called your name. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, dude, I'm still in Bondi. And he's like, bro, like, just get here. And I'm like, I'll just come and, you know, I'm probably going to miss it, but uh, I'll just come. Yep. So anyway, so we, so it was a blur, right? Of I, I speed to this comp. Of course. We get there. It's a huge fucking place. It's Olympic a Park, massive you know, venue. So you, you park your car and then you got like a 15 minute walk to fucking get to finding yep. wherever this comp's being held. And I run in, you know, Marty by my side. I run in and they're like, bro, you're on now. You're on now. And I'm like, holy shit. And I literally like <laughs> throw my gi on, run up onto the thing, slap, slap hands. hands right? <laughs> and uh, I don't remember like what happened. Uh, I don't remember how, like how the fight started. It was, it was all so fast 
that I didn't even have time to process any of the, the normal comp stress. Yeah. Like who's here? How am I feeling? Am I hungry? I gotta take a piss. <laughs> like, just it's just go. like, I gotta go. Boom. And uh, Joel and I, and all I remember is this big tall motherfucker with a, with a nose clip on. Yeah, he's like, always got the nose loves clip. Loves the nose clip. And I'm like, I'm like, nose clip. I'm like, who's this fucking guy I think he is? Like I saw it as like a, as some kind of like flex. Yeah. And I, you know, you know, cause, cause on your opponent, everything is a flex. Yeah, of course. You're like, motherfucker didn't smile at me. You're inciting me? Or you're like, <laughs> motherfucker smiled at me. <laughs> like, <Ooh. laughs> yeah, right? It's like, like Michael Jordan. I took that personally. That's right. <laughs> everything, everything is a slight on you. Yeah, against you. So anyways, um, all I remember is I pulled guard, I pulled guard on him at some point and him being a big fucking giant. We got a great photo of it where it's like him just standing there and me just like hiked up around his like rib cage. On clothes guard. With a clothes guard. We're hanging out there for a little bit and I remember um, he opened. No, he was trying to open and I was like re refusing. And then I um, I let go of my guard, came back to my feet and like took him took down. Me, oof, yeah, yes. like body lock, legs behind nice. him, put him straight down. And uh, that was huge. Obviously got the points. I think I got the points for the takedown and the man. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyways, um, what is that in points? If you, uh, if you, because there was no it's guard. It's two for takedown. Yeah, it's two for takedown. But if you go straight into the mount, you uh, don't get points. You don't necessarily get pass points, but you should get points for getting the mount. Of course, you so don't get the be, pass points. It should be six. But yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, and anyway, he fucking came back super hard, and all I remember is I edged him out in a couple of points. Oof. Yeah, and uh, I think he, I think he swept me at the end. Like he was coming back. Yeah, and the timer <laughs> went out. Luckily. <laughs> Anyways, so I had that. It was like fucking sick. And then my next match was really quickly up again. Right. And uh, it was another guy who would become someone that I would compete against very frequently. A guy called Michael Kahn. Okay. Also from Gracie, Sydney. Right. Trains out at Castle Hill. All right. Shout out. Shout out. Legendary fucking guy. Yep. I'm sure he's a black belt now. Um, and I don't, I don't remember how the fight started, but I fucking subbed him with the triangle really quickly. Boom. Yeah, and it was like, boom, pulled him. I think I pulled close guard again because that was my, my style back then and uh, just th whipped this triangle on and I'd never done a triangle. Like I'd hardly done them at training. <laughs> And I, I threw hate, a triangle on I this guy. I hate you, man. Yeah. I, hate you. I never trained it, but <laughs> yeah. it just came to me in a moment of inspiration <laughs> and it worked. Imagine, you bastard. And so, and I remember, and I've never done this, but I, I triangled him and he tapped real quick and I, and I was so elated by just like, you can tell my energy right now, right? Like from the whole event, I triangled this guy, got up and ran over and like high-fived all my teammates. Like <laughs> you bastard. <yeah. laughs> Gave my so, girlfriend a big kiss. So ungracious. <laughs> oh, bro. And then came back, I'm like, are you okay, man? You okay? <laughs> so token. Um, and, then, uh, and then I had the final, Oof. which was uh, a guy called Joe. And oh. I remember that quite well. And he Child, was, there can only be one. That's right. Joe v. Joe. It was, uh, it was a dude from Canberra and he was a tall kind of skinny guy. Yep. Uh, I never saw him again in jiu-jitsu, which okay. was it's kind of interesting, right? You think, oh, fuck, what happened to that person? Yeah, yeah did of they course. they stay on or whatever? Did you break his spirit? <laughs> Mate. <laughs> what happened? Um, you're going to love this. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, all I know is I'm, I'm in the guy's guard and he's got, his, his, guard, was, his guard was pretty tricky. I'm sure... It's what's like, yeah, long legs, skinny legs, and I'm just I'm looking for a way around, and something happens, and I kind of I kind of pass. I would like to say a knee cut, but it's not like I knew a knee cut back then. Sure. So I just kind of pass. Yep. And I go straight to the mount, and the mount's there, and I'm like, fuck, that was easy. And I've got one arm like cross facing under around like under his head. Yeah. And no word of a lie, I. Somehow I grab my own sleeve and I feed this hand over his throat like an Ezekiel. Ooh. But I've never seen or known of an Ezekiel at this oh, time. Get, get right? Out of here. Oh, oh, I gotta clarify, I didn't feed the finger in. I just grabbed my gi. All right. So I was just like, I'm in this position. I come around and I'm like, oh, my sleeve's here. And I grab it and I'm like, I'm just gonna dig my fucking <laughs> hand, like blade of my technique, wrist into this guy's jam throat. Jam my hand in his throat. And I jam it in, right? And um and I'm like fucking just seeing kill mode at this point. <laughs> of course. And the guy starts bridging super hard, right? I just feel him like bridging super hard. So I it's like on. double down and just extend the fuck out of it. And it's so deep. And I extend the fuck out of it. And the ref's like, stop, stop, stop. Dude, it's done. It's done. And I'm like, oh. And the ref's like, man, the guy was tapping. You meant to let go. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm like, no. I thought he was bridging. <laughs> you bridge. He was tapping with his foot. 
He's tapping with his foot and I thought he was bridging. So I'm like, I'm snapping this thing on hard. <laughs> You're such a savage. Such a cunt. <laughs> Poor and, um, guy. <laughs> bro. Poor guy. But ne- never gets, actually spoke again. It gets worse. <laughs> he crushed his throat. He gets up, he kind of limps off a little bit and, and, and uh, you know, I was like, thanks, man. He was like, oh, thanks, bro. Like his spirit was a bit broken. Of course. Um, we didn't actually have much of a catch up uh, after the fight, but it was all good between us. Um... My, my girlfriend was super proud. <laughs> of course. Um, but I, but the- Vai moleki, vai. Yeah, yeah. That was the first time I heard the expression, is it uh, sangue in oil? Yeah. Blood in the eyes? Yes. Like when fucking, when you, you can see sick. the blood, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I found out through Facebook, he uploaded the video of our fight and he's like, oh, I had a really good match, got, you know, silver medal at the Holy Grace Cup, congrats to my opponent, whatever. Um, you can see it that, you know, one minute, whatever, that's the moment that my knee buckles. And basically what happened is as I was passing, I think he had something going on. His knee fucked out on oh, him. No. And he actually goes, ah. And that's when I passed him out. Ah. So he kind of gave up at that point. Oh, of course, right. I didn't even realize. I was so, no. <laughs> right. But I'm like, oh, damn. Not only did I like double down on the Ezekiel when he was tapping. You broke his knee. I hurt his knee. And I, and more so, I thought it was all my doing. But it <laughs> was actually, he, he got injured. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So what, what were you to think? You, uh, you're the natural. Um, and wow. so, so that was it. It was gold medal photo with Hoyla. Amazing. Girlfriend's impressed. All the guys are like, Joey, Joey's came in man. late and you blitzed it. I'm like, oh, what's new, guys? <laughs> 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 never come prepared, kids. I, and I can honestly <laughs> say to everyone, I've never had an experience like that at competition ever again. And the next two times I would face Joel Costello, he kicked the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> and it turns out he was really sick on the day. All oh, right. Yeah, so he's like, oh, bro, I had like bad tonsillitis. Oh, so he right. goes, oh, I totally wasn't going to compete, but I was like, no, nah, i got to do it. Yeah. So, you know, all these little things and you're like, ah, okay, that was just a day when the stars aligned. Yes. Somehow. And that adrenaline from running late just... It was perfect. And you, no thinking. It the, was it was absolutely perfect. I, was, I wasn't I was hanging out in there before the comp. It was just straight into it, you know? Yeah, wow. That's... Um, that's yeah. that's Amazing. <laughs> it, it, it kills me how easy you got oh. that. Well, I mean, not easy. Obviously, you came at it really hard, but like, I think it's very rare. And I think I speak for the majority of people who might be listening to ever have such a, a golden run, right? Like, it's not always that straightforward. And also, just to just beat everyone, you know, like sometimes a person's best comp experience is just get on the podium. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or not get subbed in your first match or. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. 100%. And I, I think the, the thing is that's – I <laughs> I, I want to say that is not how you should model your comp. <laughs> <laughs> I just, can I just provide that as a caveat, guys? Uh, unless you are a completely frothy blue belt in your mid-20s, you live in Bondi and you have a Brazilian girlfriend, go for it. <laughs> that's, that, that is the model for you. But maybe there's something there that, you know, folks could try like – playing with how long you spend at the place before you compete and sure. like headspace and all that. Cause yeah. I've always thought, man, that was really telling because every other comp I've done since I'm like, I can feel the nerves yep. thinking back. I'm like, Oh, it's fucking hanging around nervous energy, you know, like excited, but it's also a bit depleting. Yeah. So I've, I've thought like, how could I replicate that intentionally? Yes. Without risking actually not showing up for my fight. Not, not getting scratched. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, special day will live in my heart forever. To those that were a part of it, thank you, Joel, <laughs> Joe, Michael Khan. You guys are fucking legends. Marty, yeah. if you're listening, appreciate, <laughs> appreciate you. you Hoyla. Hoyla, thanks for being there, yeah. Hoyla. We At the time, I was out. just like, who's this guy? Is he like one of the Gracies that I don't know? I'm <laughs> best best gig competitor ever out of that family. I, I know, right? <laughs> That's all good, man. Amazing. Bro, tell me yours. Well... The funny thing is the, the story I'm going to tell, actually, I, I want to share this story because it, it is the, not, I already had it in mind, but it is the complete contrast to your story. <laughs> and actually, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but basically I've had a few different bouts of winning. And, but the reason why I want to talk about this one is it, it's about competition pressure because you build up this pressure in your head, right? And a lot of people can't deal with that discomfort and i have tried to condition myself to see it as excitement like not see it as like 
you know, people say, oh, I feel anxious or oh, oh, I'm scared or whatever it is. And, you know, I feel the same thing, but I go, no, 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 I'm hype. I feel good. This is a good thing. Like, yes, harness this energy. Like, yes, what it's about. Um, so I'm going to talk about my best performance at Worlds. So that was actually 2014. And that was the last time I went to Worlds. And that was his purple belt. How many times have you been to Worlds? Been four times. Holy shit. Yeah. All right. So best performance at Worlds. And uh, it's, it's one of those things that for any of you out there who want to go that IBJJF path, uh, you've got to kind of know what you get yourself in for. And uh, what I had previously done is gone to Brazil, trained in Brazil, followed up to, to Worlds in California and, and gone there. Anyway, this time I happened to come up with the Alliance team. I'd been training at Alliance for about four and a half months and just absolutely getting destroyed. Like training really hard but getting destroyed. And Liv and Lockie were there at that same time and, and so was Canon. And that's like Alliance HQ in Sao Paulo? That's right. right. And uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd been there for this time around. It was like a five-month stint and I'd been there previously for six months and previous journeys as well. And was just really determined, just determined like I've got to do the best I can. And I had been so conditioned by just training as hard as I could at Alliance that I felt like I was prepared. And the, I guess the thing is in Alliance, they have a strategy where they back, they have an A player. You know, they say, this is our guy. So that's how they get their points. They, they declared, this is our guy. And if this guy or woman gets the championship, they get the points. Because they can only have a certain number of competitors per category. Right. And I was in the same category as uh, Nicholas Marangali. Holy who, shit. Yeah. <laughs> when he was a purple belt. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I think maybe Isaac. You were the A guy, right? <laughs> so I was the no guy. <laughs> I was the Z guy for going to sleep. Nah. Um, and I think Izaki uh, Benyensi was also in that category. Holy shit. Or maybe shit. he'd gone down. Anyway, he's a sassy dude. He trolled me real hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was living in the same accommodation as Isaac, and he said, "Oh man, you look so old." <laughs> about my face, oh. he's like, "Your face, oh, you, you're fit, but you look old." And I'm like, "Oh, that's cool, man. You got the young face, but you got that old body because you're <laughs> kind of fat." <laughs> I poked him in the belly. <laughs> you upstart mother. But then also, you know, he's a world champion. Respect. Um, and at that time, Nicholas Marangali was on a tear, like beating it, like doing the kind of Keenan Cornelius thing, like. Wins weight, wins absolute, etc. Like at right. every single competition. Fuck. And this is a guy I potentially might have to fight. And I, I trained with him only once or so, twice. But you guys are representing the same team? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we're on different sides of the bracket. Right. Which is cool. So it means I won't have to fight him till finals. But there's plenty of other ultra tough humans in, the, of course. in that category. <laughs> And uh, anyway, I just didn't really know who anyone was. And when you're at Worlds, guys, it is a circus. Like, you have to really... You couldn't do what Joe did. Worlds was in Brazil at that uh, stage? No, no, this is in California. In Cali, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it changed over, I think, in, back in 2007-ish. Anyway, it's a huge stadium, you know, uh, California State Uni, CSU, the pyramid. It's iconic, the big stairs. Yeah. It's awesome. You get to see all your heroes there, the teams line up, the team chants. It's, it's exciting. I, I think if you do jiu-jitsu, you should at least once in your lifetime go to Worlds. Even if you are just going for a holiday to support your team, go to see it because it, it's really cool. It'll, it'll put the fire in your heart to want to do more jiu-jitsu. But uh, yeah, I was there. There was a, a few people there. I think Craig Jones might have even been there. Fuck Craig uh, Jones. Fuck Craig Jones, man. Whatever, Mexican ground karate. <laughs> that guy doesn't know nothing. I mean... <laughs> no, he does. He I was just quoting the the thing on his clothes all the well, time. Well, no, I, that's I think it's great. No, I <laughs> I'm a supporter of Craig. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> that's fine. You know, it's cool. But I, I think ultimately being there with the team because I was staying at the hotel with the, with the whole team, being around all the guys, being there with Bernardo and Michael and just all the champions, and it's a great camaraderie. Yeah. And so when you're there, and they're the biggest gang. Like as much as Atos is a big crew, Alliance team is the biggest posse. Right. Because they come in all the affiliates, everyone's there. And because I'd known people over the years, I actually felt like, hey, I'm part, you know, I'm part of this. And everyone was like really supportive of me. But when I was on, no one was coaching me. 
Oh. I, I, yeah, I just, everyone was everywhere else. I'm a purple belt. I don't matter in the grand scheme of things. And I had my first fight and I don't know who the guy was. But honestly, the thing about it is there's so much adrenaline. Like I was in the bullpen for, I was in the bullpen too early. I was there for an hour. Fuck. <laughs> just bouncing up and down, just like, let's go. Let's go. Just, you know, everyone's mean mugging each other in the uh, odd eye and just marching up and down. People doing aggressive, weird warm ups. I was just trying to keep the energy going. Was it, uh, I'm guessing it was like amplified in terms of how people are acting and behaving oh, compared definitely. to what you get in a local comp here? Definitely. And I think- like the, more the, flex. Oh, way more flex. Right. But then also there's more ch- There's more expectation. Right. Each team's got their favorite at each weight and belt. And, you know, there's always, who knows, maybe, uni- I think at that time, maybe Unity had bones, like big Johnny, Bo- like- big bones and let's go let's go there's a famous video of him like screaming for the heavyweight final i think it's that year i could be wrong yeah but you know there's 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 so much invested by everyone there you are but a speck unless you're one of those you're a speck right anyway i made friends with my bullpen guy i'm like oh okay matt nine hey matt nine guy i'm james thompson i'm the guy you see that on the list you call me i'm here i'm here don't scratch me because friends of mine had been in the bullpen with the, you know, Beats by Dre headphones on, not listening to their name being called. And if you don't jump in and go, that's me, they will just move on. You scratch. Oh. Yeah, you spend five grand to go all the way to Worlds. You didn't pay attention. You are gone. Holy shit. Yeah. And then they're front. And are they doing the, do, is it more um, accurate how they announce your name? Or is it the Brazilian guy that's never <laughs> pronounced no, a name plenty, like yours? No, no, no. There's plenty of like... Plenty of American uh, California. Worthington. <laughs> Washington. Did you say what? Joe Worthington? <laughs> <laughs> Washington. Uh, but no, man, I think it's, there's a lot of Cali kids. It's all good in that way. Like but it's professional. You better learn. Right. Like you better look at the screen, pick your fight and know when you're up. Like no one's doing it for you. Yeah. I got on, tall guy, lanky guy. I just did my game. Pulled guard. I swept, came up, passed. He came up. Uh, I try and go on him. Like real quick, it was a like a bl- like a blur, but like in slow mo to me. Like I just had no emotion. It was just bah, 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 bang, and I was off. I was like, ah, oh, cool, good start. Okay, fist bump might have popped his elbow, but all right, cool, bro. See you later. Cool. Next round, got a buy. Mad. Oh shit. But then what do I do for forty minutes? Like it was kind of weird because that you start out when you're at Worlds, it's a long time in between. You start, you might wait an hour. And then as the rounds go through, it shortens up, shortens up. The time shortens up. So you're fighting harder guys at shorter intervals, yeah. <laughs> which is tough. Um, next guy I fought, he was a California kid, real tough, maybe from Paragon that used to be an alliance team thing, but then they weren't. And yeah, we just had a war back and forth. And Paragon, I, are they the guys on Instagram, they always do a selfie? Their gym oh. is just their gym. Instagram is full of selfie pictures of the coach and all the students. It c- it could be they okay. used to they used to it used to be the home of Jeff Glover, Jeff Glover and Bill the Grill okay. back in the day. Yeah, they were the stars from that gym before they kind of left and did their own thing. Right. Um, he was really tough, but I ended up uh, I ended up getting his back and choking him. Oof. That was just it was it didn't it, it took a while. It was hard fought. I ended up getting his back and choking him. It's like fuck yeah, damn. God, yes. Two subs in. Yeah, two subs in. So I'm technically three fights in, but I only had two fights, but just feeling the sweat now, feeling the work like, yes, I'm making my way through the rounds. And then um, my next match, I think, was a guy from South America. I don't know what country, but I couldn't pick it. It wasn't Brazilian. And I straight foot locked him hard, like wrecked his ankle, wrecked his ankle. Really quick, uh, you know, I, I'm guard pulling this whole time. But okay, so I'm just going to rewind a bit. When I was at um, Sao Paulo training, they were like, oh, we've got a new game for you because I was like, all right, I've got kind of four or five months to work on a game. They're like, you're going to do sit-up guard. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I play reverse style here. I do it. They're like, no, you're going to do sit-up guard. And I was like, oh, it's cool. They're like investing in me. They're teaching me. Just for you guys out there, if you know what sit-up guard is, sit-up guard is the strong man game. <laughs> it's basically you sit up out of guard Stand up on the leg and perform a single leg takedown. Oh, it's not Ads even loves that. It's not even a guard, really. <laughs> like you kind of cut from like a Dela Heva, some yeah, kind of half guard. Like sort of you're a Dela Heva or a reverse Dela Heva, and you just sit up on the leg, come up on the single, and you just come up on the single. Yeah, and Miragali works that a lot. He does he? also like Cobrinha, uh, 
<laughs> what do you call it? Uh, like a lot of t- t- top alliance guys have done it, and strong guys too. Right. It's it's the it's the I'm not necessarily that good at guard, but I'm strong. I'm gonna sit up and take you down. <laughs> and so when I had that explained to me that no 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 this is the guard for guys that don't do guard real good <laughs> i was like oh dang <laughs> but it worked right like because yeah i'm whatever like my guard's okay but i was like yeah i'm the strong guy i'll come up on that leg and anyway i, I so i ended up footlocking this guy like pretty well and i was like dang i am i i feel good today like i you know what i could do it like i could man whatever if i don't get marangali like he was on the other side of the draw like man let's maybe this is the day so yeah, it's starting to shorten up. Like I'm four rounds. I'm like, yeah, dude, three fucking bro, subs, bro, from three matches. Man, I'm I'm surprised. People myself. listening right now are like, fuck this guy. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you have to understand. I've had some very average, like not like lost first round, lost second round, been submitted times. So this is why I'm bringing up this story. So the next round, I'm fighting a guy called Hunter from Fight Sports Gym, and he has a particular game that I'm not aware of. And this is where it's actually, look, not that I think you should study your opponents, but I think afterwards I was speaking to, I might've been speaking to Craig. He's like, oh yeah, Hunter, he's got that real good footlock from 50-50 game. And I was like, ah. ah." Anyway, so anyway, whatever, I pulled guard and I'm I'm fighting this guy strong, athletic as hell. And I was like, oh, I I think he might be stronger than me. That's a scary thought. (laughs) And um, I was, I, I actually was like, try to sit up on sit up guard and he smashed me down. I was like, Oh, hang on. All right. So I was playing reverse Della Heva and I got a sweep. And I came up on the sweep. Two points. Yes. Anyway, we scrambled. He tried to take me down. We went out and I pulled guard again. Same deal. Couldn't sit up. Couldn't whatever. Swept again. Came up. Scramble. 4 nil. I'm like, okay, it's gone. Okay. Like this guy's not changing anything. So then, same scenario. Pull guard. Try to sweep. Come up on the sweep but it was kind of not secure and we're a bit scrambly. And I did the dumb thing, which it would have been great to have a coach, where I look across to just check if I get my point. Like little side glance, like check the time, check the points, get the points. I'm up 6-0 and he just just hits me into 50-50. And I'm like, oh. And my front foot, like my like rear. you're my, still on top. But I'm on top, just, but I'm now in 50-50. Right, yeah. And he crosses my foot over to – like decide he's going to footlock me. <laughs> yeah. And I just don't know. I don't know the, what, exactly what he's doing. I'm just like, I'm up 6-0. There's, I don't know, four minutes ago. Got like, me in this stall position. Yeah, I'm like, good. ah, whatever's this guy going? And he goes to put on the f- straight footlock and he goes to, he goes like, right, I'm going to, and he cinches it up and he goes to turn. I'm like, oh, no, you don't. And he did a little shoulder check where he's going to footlock me and you like, look like, you're going to tap, bro. And I was like, hell no, I'm not going to tap. I was like kicking and shoving and like just, I was fighting like so hard. I was like punching him in the butt cheek. I was like, get the fuck off my foot. I was going mental and he's like, all right. Fully turned into it, belly down, bridged into it. Oh. And then it was just pop, pop. Oh. And, and my foot went there. Like, oh. like he, I could see my, my legs hanging straight and I could like see my own foot, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that's fucked up, like oh, the bottom of your foot. Yeah, dude. And the referee's looking at me, looking at him, and I'm like, you're like, how long left, ref? <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, oh, it's just like, I have to give you a pat on the back for that one, bro. Yeah. Pat, pat. And he was like, yeah. And I, and I couldn't stand on it. Like, Holy was, shit. That's it. That's my run, right? And we get up. I can barely put any weight in my foot. And uh, anyway, we go off, and that's, that's my day, you know. He fights Nicholas Marangali next round. I'm not sure. I think he gets triangled. How hard did you cheer for Marangali? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't actually. I didn't. I didn't watch, man. I was kind of. I was a bit gutted. I'll be honest. I was shattered because I thought this this could be the day because he he loses to Marangali, he gets bronze. Does that make sense? So. Oh right, yeah. But so if he won, if if I no no no, it wouldn't have mattered. Like if I had won that match, I would have made podium. Right, yeah. So I have never made it to the podium at Worlds. Right. And I really felt like this is my year. I, I've put the work in. I met the height of my powers. Yeah. And, it, you know, it didn't happen. And now my ankle, my right ankle is completely fucked. <sighs> I couldn't walk. And so anyway, I was just sitting with an ice pack on my ankle, man. And I tell you, I ate about five kilos of that pizza <laughs> from, the, from the cafeteria. Just do hot dogs and pizza. But uh, long story short, Nicholas Mer- Merengali wins. And Hunter from Fight Sports, I forget his last name. He's a bit of a ledge. He, he got bronze. That year, and you guys should remember this if you 
um, Edwin Najmi does a flying triangle and submits Nicholas Merengali in the final of the absolute of purple belt. Oh, no way. So Nicholas Merengali doesn't get the the double. So he's won at weight. Because weight and absolute is considered like the... That's the grand... But he was, yeah. he was trying to do it at every major tournament in the world, like Abu Dhabi. And, Holy shit. And he'd won every other comp that year, weight and absolute, except for Worlds, because Edwin Najmi flying triangled him. Holy shit. So you know what happened? They kept him at purple for another year. Merengali. Yeah. Holy shit, because they're like, you've got to write this you wrong. Have to, you have to win every comp weight and absolute. How unfair is that to every purple belt That's in the world? so fucked. It's so bad. And I don't get me wrong. Because it was a, just a, pride, a point of pride for them. Well, he or, should he should have most definitely been a brown belt, right? Yeah, He's better than every purple I mean, belt even in the if world. You place on the podium at every purple belt comp around the world. You're, There's a strong case that you should, you be, should a purple, be a brown belt. A brown belt right. yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. He did eventually, after another year of savaging every bloody purple belt, become the like super champ. Right. Weight and absolute of every category. Holy shit. But that's what I'm saying, guys. The reason why I wanted to say this is my best performance. It was my best performance. Even though I didn't ultimately win, it was my best prep. And my best performance on the day. And that's the highest stakes comp you can do. Pretty much. Pretty much. And, and you know, I, I, can, I can say I put it all on the table and that guy messed me up. <laughs> and that's fine. But then you're in America, uh, you know, with no... No healthcare. No healthcare. I mean, I had travel insurance, but, you know, I just basically had to spend the rest of my trip rehabbing my ankle, foot up on ice watching the NBA finals. What had happened to it? What, uh, did, you, what I, did you do? I had, tw- I had completely torn one ligament and done partial tears to other two ligaments, but I wasn't getting an MRI and I wasn't going to hospital. And then I was off to Canada two weeks after that. Holy shit. So, um, but anyway, being there at Worlds, I got to witness Bernardo Faria almost beat Adolfo Vieira, but not. Wow. It was last time they ever fought and there was a moment where Bernardo could have taken his back and it was pretty huge. And then there was another huge moment when Philippe Pena beat Andre Galvan. And what is amazing uh, about this, when you watch the finals, guys, and this is something I've just, I'm a little bit off piece here, but they, you have 10 mats when everyone's competing. But when it comes to finals on the Sunday, they pin it down to two mats and you just focus on those. And it was amazing. It was, it was crazy to see. And all of Alliance team was cheering for Philippe Penner, even though he's Gracie Baja. And I mean, obviously he has his own team. If Andre Galvam had won... The, the final, Atos would have won the team trophy. <laughs> but because <laughs> Philippe Penner, like, and Philippe Penner was on one. He was tearing it up. And he'd beaten an alliance guy, Demetrius Sosa, to, to make that final. And yeah, man, he put it on Galvam, if you watch that. And they were all go, like, they were going, ooh, aggressive Baja, ooh, aggressive Baja. <laughs> like, you know, all the alliance team, you wow. know? Because they're like, don't let Galvan get win. that fucking team trophy. Yeah, because it meant that Alliance got their like tenth or eleventh team trophy, or yeah, right. It was. It was. It was. Ma- it was massive for the team. And what was funny was, I'll just full ex- full, um, full transparency. Philippe Penner popped for steroids, <laughs> like oh, did he? only like three months later. <laughs> that was sold to him by Alliance. <laughs> by yeah. I don't know. I can't say. Can't say that's part of it. And then Galvan oh, wow. was really upset because Alliance still kept the team trophy. And then Galvan vowed that he would double now, down to take more steroids, steroids than, than any other competitor ever. And so when <laughs> when he bashed Philippe Penner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in Abu Dhabi. At ADCC. Fuck. And how juicy was he? He was like, I'll show you how to take steroids. Yeah, bro. Right. <laughs> 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 nah. Anyway, so guys, look, that's Worlds. It, it's obviously not, not the glory of Joe's story, but there was a lot of prep and a lot of consideration in all of that. But what I would say is the competing of it was quite effortless. I'd never felt that good in a comp. Like, it's the highest pressure situation and actually... Everything around it felt uncomfortable, but the time on the mat felt good. Wow. And that makes me think the way I prepared was, was right. Yeah, right. you just done absolutely everything you could have done. Yeah. But, uh, man, I just, I'm, I'm so G'd right now. I'm, f- I'm just flashing back. It's, it's exciting to talk about, isn't it, it? It's so cool when you're in that stadium. And, and it is a, I feel it's a little bit unhealthy. You know, when you've been inside all day, yeah. there's no air con. Yeah. It's a bit dank. It's like fluorescent lighting and shit. Yeah, and you kind of just general smell of sweaty bodies and... Testosterone. Feet. 
Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is rank. Yeah, it's a bit gross. But I mean, you're sweaty and dirty and whatever, and it's just there. But you might have a chance encounter, like a a world champion sits down next to you who's just won a fight and they're really happy, and so they're really late. They're like, "Oh, hey, man, how you going? How's your jujitsu?" And you're like, "Oh, what's up, Bradley West Steamer? <laughs> how you doing?" And you just you become friends, you know. It's, yeah. And I think that's the beauty of competition. Um, even though a lot of people out there might not identify as competitors, um, it's so it's so good for you, and you realize that we're all out there fighting that struggle and overcoming our nerves and all our senses of self doubt and insufficiency, and it's it's a great bonding thing to go. Like you made so many friends through your comp experience, Joe. Right? Totally, always. Yeah, like I the comps. Yeah, the comps really. That last one I went to, they're, they're such a social thing. Yeah. And you see all these people that maybe used to compete against, but they don't compete anymore. They're just there to watch. And sure. It doesn't matter, right? You're just like, oh man, fuck, you're still like in the community. Yeah. In the game somehow. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And a, a great piece of advice I actually got from Kavaka. Now he's from Czech Match originally, and then he then started Team Zenith, Zenich. But he was Bushesh's coach and really taught Bushesh his game. And I had talked to him at a comp one time. He has the man has the hairiest forearms of all time. I say this as a man wow. with hairy forearms. Yeah. But his his forearms are about as hairy as your head, Joe. Wow, carpeted. Oh, believe it. Testosterone in that guy. He said to me, one competition is worth four weeks of training in terms of learning. Right. That's his vibe. That's how he sees it. So he wants his guys to compete. If there's a comp every weekend, compete every weekend. Yeah. Because right. he's like, you're that far ahead of someone who trains for six months and competes once. Yeah in terms of learning the insufficiencies of your game and what works, what doesn't, all of that. And I've always kept that in my mind um, as, as competition as a learning thing. It's not about so much the ego as just really finding out the truth. Yeah, it's a good point. You, you can see that in the people that do compete all the time. Yep. They just get good at competing, don't they? Like yeah. it, they just fucking handle the nerves well. Get used to the process. Competition game, like, yeah, it's all down. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. So I... I, I want to encourage everybody at any stage, you know, if, even if you don't consider yourself a competitor, prepare yourself, train up and, and, and have some, a bit of courage. You might only have one or two fights, but you might make a best friend and you, you guys stay friends forever, way beyond, you know, jujitsu or competing or anything. Yeah. So I think that's, that's a great thing. Fucking cool. Cool beans. Man, good stories. I hope you guys listening enjoyed that. Yeah. There I, are other stories. There also. are others. I can't say I've got many that can top, <laughs> you know, that can top the one I just mentioned today. But I, I'm excited to, at some point, to do worst competition performance story. Oh, man. <laughs> That'll be good. <laughs> I've got some beauties. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Glorious fails. Also performed in front of the same girlfriend. Oh. Went horribly wrong. <laughs> it's the balance. Yeah. That's why you're not together anymore. <laughs> 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 nah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for um, tuning in. And if you want to hear more information relevant to Bulletproof, we do have our YouTube live, which is every Sunday, 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So if you're hearing this on the other side of the world, you can watch it after the date. It will be posted on our YouTube. If you don't follow our YouTube, please go and subscribe at Bulletproof BJJ on YouTube and uh, it'll, um, it'll get you. Yeah, heaps of good content going on there. And um, you can actually, people can ask JT questions, right? Mm -hmm. If you're there at the live at 5 p.m. Aussie time, yes. Sydney time, it's like, you can engage. So get on there and, and any jujitsu related questions, strength, mobility, competition, whatever, throw them at this guy. Live chat. Thanks, bro. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, bro.